In today's video, I'm going to show you how I hooked up that old analog desk phone to work with my Grandstream UCM6302 PBX using that Grandstream HT802 analog phone adapter. So if you think it's something that you're interested in learning how to do, stick around. Okay, so I mentioned that I used the Grandstream HT802 ATA to connect the old rotary phone to my Grandstream UCM6302. However, you might be asking yourself, what is an ATA? What does that stand for? So let's take a look at that now. Okay, an ATA is an analog telephone adapter. And according to Wikipedia, and I'm sourcing this from Wikipedia, an analog telephone adapter is a device for connecting traditional analog telephones, fax machines, and similar customer premises devices to a digital phone system or a voice over IP telephony network. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're just going to take an analog phone. We're going to connect it up to work with the voice over IP telephone system. However, I want to show you the physical connections now. So let me bring over this slide next. And just looking at these physical connections, obviously this is a very simple network diagram. I have a basic edge router X connected to the internet. I have a Unify switch connected to the edge router. And just for argument's sake, I have a computer hanging off the switch. Over here, we have a Grandstream UCM 6300 series PBX hanging off the network as well. Here is the Grandstream HT802 ATA analog telephone adapter. And you can see that it is physically plugged in to the network switch using an ethernet connection. And then here is the old style analog phone and it is connected to the back of the ATA to an analog phone port, better known in this case as an FXS port. So now that we have a better understanding of how it's physically connected, let's take a look at the actual ATA on Grandstream's website. So this is the unit that I'm using. It is the HT802. It actually has two ports on the back for two analog phones. So it's got FXS1 and FXS2, and you can see that right here. There's port one, there's port two, and there's the actual network jack right there that plugs into the network via an ethernet cable. So let's take a look at some of the features now. It supports two SIP profiles through two FXS ports, which we mentioned earlier, and it also has a single 10100 network port. It supports TLS and SRTP security encryption. It has automatic provisioning. It supports three-way voice conferencing. It could fail over to a secondary server if the main server goes down. It does support T.38 faxing. It supports wide range of caller ID formats. And if you use it with the Grandstream UCM series of IP PBXs, you have zero provisioning as well. So the next thing I want to do now is take you into the actual software side of the Grandstream HT802 and show you how I have it connected to the UCM. And by the way, the HT802 is currently selling on Amazon for about 40 bucks. So it's really not a bad price. If you're interested in seeing how it's configured and how it connects to the UCM, stick around. Okay, we are signed into the UI of the HT802 and it's a little bit of an archaic user interface, but it gets the job done. There are several tabs across the top. We are basically going to work in the FXS port one tab, but I'll explain what these other tabs are briefly. Let's start with the status tab. You can see here, we have the IP address of the actual HT802 ATA. We have the product model, the serial number, the hardware version, but down here where it says port status, you can see the FXS one port is on hook registered to extension 1003. Now I don't have the FXS2 port configured, which is why it says not registered. Under the basic settings, you can change user passwords and other information. Under the advanced settings, you can change the admin password, set the firmware upgrade path, things like that. But we're not gonna be working here either. We're gonna take a look at the FXS port and how I have that configured so that that rotary phone works with the Grandstream UCM. So let's click on the FXS port. The first thing you notice is I have account active selected as yes. 
That's very important that you turn that on. The primary SIP server, this is the IP address of the PBX, in my case, the Grandstream UCM 6302. I do not have a failover PBX, so I left that blank. Everything else can stay the same. Let's go down to where it says SIP user ID. This is where we connect the extension with the FXS port. So assuming you have an extension created already in your PBX, and we're not going to get into how to create the extensions. I've already done videos on that. You can go back and check my Grandstream setup videos if you're interested. So we're going to assume that you have an extension already created. You need to grab the password from that extension. And under the SIP user ID, you're going to enter the extension number. Same thing for the authenticate ID, it's the extension number. And then in the password field, you would put in the password that you got from the PBX. Now you can see here, I did give it a name and I'm just going to do a quick search because, because I'm using a rotary phone, I have to enable pulse. So I'm going to search for pulse and you can see it brings me down right into the screen here where it says enable pulse dialing make sure that is enabled because in this case it is a rotary phone under pulse dialing standard we have three options general standard swedish standard and new zealand standard we're going to leave it set to the default general standard and then we're going to come all the way down once we have all those settings in and then just say update and then apply and it saves it and then you get your connected status so all that said what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and make a test call because you did see in the previous screen that the rotary phone is registered to the UCM. So I'm going to first call an individual extension, which is this one over here. This, this Grandstream 2135 is extension 2000, uh, 2203. We're going to call that from the rotary phone and you'll see this extension here lighting up and ringing. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll call from extension two, 203 over to the rotary phone, which is extension 1003. Okay, and it works just like any other phone in the system like these three phones right here are all part of a ring group that I have set up so I'm going to call the ring group now from the rotary phone and you should hear all three phones ringing And there you go, all three phones ringing. So it is pretty much that simple as long as you follow these steps. So there you go, there's a look at how I set up my old rotary phone to work with my Grandstream UCM 6302 PBX. Do you have any old phones laying around in your attic or basement? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know the model, is it a wall phone? Is it a princess style phone? Is it a desk phone like the one I have here? A rotary phone? even a touch-tone phone for that matter. In any event, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you, as I do in every video, for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. And if you feel so inclined to support the channel in other ways, I have links to a Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description. Again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.